Hi guys, this is Sadek from Robin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Lineage OS 22 ROM based on Android 15 onto your POCO F5. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First and foremost, you'll have to get hold of the latest Android SDK platform tools. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction in C drive and these are the files of platform tools. Once you have done the extraction, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now enable both this toggle. For that, go to the settings menu on your phone, then go to about phone and tap on OS version 7 times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer, as you could see. So now go back and go to additional settings, and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will now get a prompt on your phone. Check mark I am aware of all the risk and then wait for 10 seconds. Once that time frame has elapsed, just tap on OK. And with this debugging is now enabled, you might get one more prompt. So again tap on OK. Let's now verify the debugging connection. So for that, you have to open the CMD window inside platform tools. So either type in CMD and hit enter or go to the start menu, type in CMD, then copy the lo location of the platform tools directory, then type in CD for chain directory and paste the path here and hit enter. And you, you are now inside the platform tools directory. Now type in ADB devices and verify that you are getting an ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC, disable and re-enable USB debugging, tap on revoke USB debugging, use the official USB cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB fixes and verify that you are getting an ID. Once you are getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do know that unlocking will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. If that's well and good, you could refer to a guide and the video and get this job done via the official me unlock tool. Once you have unlocked the bootloader, your phone will undergo a reset and boot to the OS. So make sure to re-enable USB debugging once again. Moving on, you will now get hold of the ROM file from this link. Apart from the ROM zip file, you will also have to download the boot, DTBO recovery and vendor boot. So get hold of all the five files. And once you have got all these files, you will have to transfer the files inside the platform tools directory. So these are all the fi files. Let's move it here inside the platform tools folder. And once that is done, let's rename the ROM file to something shorter. So for the ease of convenience, let me rename the ROM file to ROM.zip so that the complete name becomes ROM.zip and it will be easier to type in the CMD window. That is it. And now let's move ahead with the next step. So if you want to flash G apps as well, then you may download the Nick G apps, the Android 15 build from this link. I already have it. So let's transfer it inside the platform tools folder as well. It should be somewhat here. Just a minute. This is the next G apps. I'm using the basic one. You want to download the basic core full stock. It's completely up to you. So just give me a minute. I also have a guide on the G apps. You could also use the search bar and just I'll show you the various versions of the G apps, which I'm talking about. So this is the guide for the sake of reference. I'm just using this guide. So as you could see, these are the various versions: the core G apps, the basic G apps, the Omni G apps, the stock G apps, and the full G apps. The full is the largest one, whereas the core is the smallest one with the, only the required Google apps. Do not download the Go G apps because these are only for the Google Go versions of the phones, and you should skip this. As of now, I'm using the basic G apps. So you may download the required GI packages of your phone and transfer it inside the platform tools directory as well. And once that is done, you will now have to boot your phone to the fast boot mode. So type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter. And your phone will now reboot into fast boot mode. Once it's in that mode, type in fast boot devices and verify that you're getting an ID as well. If you are not getting any ID, then you will have to install fast boot drivers on your PC. We have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to a guide and get the job done. 
once you install the drivers right click on the window icon and choose device manager then expand the android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown here apart from that also verify that is shown here as well so both of these signify that your pc is able to read the phone in fast boot mode and we are now good to go ahead so we may now get started with the flashing process so make sure that the rom zip file the four partition files and the g apps which is optional is there as well let, let me rename the g apps to something shorter as well so it becomes g app dot zip and it will be easier to type in the cmd window as well so let's start with the flashing in this regard first off we'll flash the boot file to the boot partition you may either type in the command or simply paste it here after that you will have to flash the dtbo file in the dtbo partition and then you have to flash the vendor boot in the vendor boot partition as well it will take a few seconds and then you have to flash the lineage OS recovery in the recovery partition so let's do that as well and now we have to boot our phone to the newly flashed recovery via the fast boot reboot recovery command hit enter and with this we our phone will now reboot into the recovery and your first course of action is to do a data wipe so we'll do that as well and we are now inside the recovery so let's do a data wipe so go to factory reset format data factory reset format data and data wipe is now complete and we could now sideload the rom zip file so go back then go to apply update apply from adb and your phone is now in the sideload mode let's verify the same so type in adb devices and verify that you are getting the sideload keyword if that's well and good then let's sideload the rom zip file so type in adb sideload file name which is rom.zip and hit enter and the sideloading will now start and it could take up to around 6 to 8 minutes so let's just wait for that to happen so guys the flashing is now complete and it will now ask you if you want to flash any other zip file so if you want to flash any zip file such as gapps or any other file tap on yes and do an adb sideload of the required zip file and after that do a factory reset on the other hand if you don't want to flash any other zip file then tap on no reboot to recovery do a factory reset and then you may reboot to system as of now let's flash one more zip file which is the gr packages so i will tap on yes and my phone will now reboot to the lineage os recovery and we may now do an adb sideload of the gs file so you might get such messages such as adb fail to read no com command no error these are not an error message as you could see obviously it's showing us no error so you must simply ignore this and we are now inside the recovery once again so go to apply update apply from adb and you may now sideload the required zip file in my case it's the adb sideload gapps.zip i am again saying gapps is completely optional and only sideload it if you want to obtain and have google app and packages and framework on your phone if you don't want you may simply skip this but i am sideloading the, the google apps and in my case you will also get a signature verification failed this is happening because the gapps are not a part of the official lineage os family so if you try to sideload any zip file which is not a part of lineage os whether it's magisk any module or gapps you will get this warning sign is completely normal just tap on yes and in my case as you could see we are flashing the basic gapps so it has somewhat more google apps as compared to the core gapps so it will not flash all these files and the flashing of gas will take some time depending on the package which you are flashing and once that is done you will be notified of the same it will not take much time so let's just wait and the flashing should now be complete and it's done once the flashing is complete you may now reboot your phone to the system but before that i will advise you to do a factory reset once again just to be on the safer side and the factory reset is now complete and we will now tap on reboot system now and your phone will now reboot to the os do know that the first boot up will take up some additional time that is completely normal and nothing to worry about from the subsequent time that will not be the case moreover let's just wait for the boot animation or at least the boot logo to appear either of which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully moreover i've given all the steps in my guide as well you could refer to my guide and the screenshot and get this job done so with that said let's wait for a few more seconds for the boot animation to appear and then we will check out the rom as you could see it's the new boot animation which came with lineage was 
21 Android 14 and it's there on Android 15 as well. So let's give it a few more seconds and then our phone will boot to the ROM. So guys, we are now inside the ROM. Let's get started with the process. As of now, I'm skipping the initial setup process. If you want, you may connect your phone to the Wi-Fi, then connect your phone to the Google account and then restore all your data. But that's completely optional and up to you. And with this, we are now inside the OS. Since I flash the GI packages, I'm getting the Google apps. And this is a QS price. This is the setting menu, the new settings menu with Android 15. So let's first have a look at what all features are there in the ROM. So these are the various Android 15 specific features. As you could see over here, power menu in QS styles is currently missing. Okay, so it's there. It's well and good. That's great to see. We also have a new settings menu as well from Android 15. Then the partial screen recording. Let me have a look at that as well. Screen recording. So that is there as well. So using this, you may only do a screen recording in a single app. So you may just type on start recording and choose the app of your choice and the screen recording will only take place on that app. If you switch over to any other app or if you get a notification of from any other app, then the recording will be paused and that section from that app will not be recorded and the recording will only resume once you get back to this app. That's quite a handy feature. Apart from that, there's a new back gesture. So this is working as well as you could see the predictive back gesture is working as well. Apart from that, the new volume panel so let me verify that as well so the volume panel is not revamped it's the older one which is not a major cause of concern then battery information section so that is there as well for most of the user these information are suffice and they should no longer require a third party app as well for the battery information and apart from that let's have a look at the taskbar so it's usually under the system button section so the taskbar is currently not in this menu as well. Let me search for it and then verify it. So the taskbar is yet, yet to be added. Usually the taskbar is a part of the folding or the tablets, but there are a few customers which have added this feature on phones as well. So even if a taskbar is missing, it's not a cause of concern because the taskbar is not made for the phones. They are mostly made for the tablets and the folding devices so we must give it a skip finally the private space security and privacy and the private space is there so you may add any app of your choice in the private space and it will be hidden from the app drawer first you have to set up a screen lock and then i'll show you the private space feature as well so let me put a simple screen lock and it's done and now you have to go to the start menu and from here well let me Verified once again the private space. Let me first confirm the screen lock setup. It will take a few seconds and you may either choose a new lock or choose the same lock which you have used for the screen lock. For now, I'm using the same screen lock and it will just take a few seconds and it's all done and dusted. And as you could see, the private space is shown in the app drawer. So if you have more number of apps, then it will be downward. But we, since we have only a few apps it's shown here, and you might also be thinking that if someone knows the password of your phone, the screen lock pattern, or if your phone is currently unlocked and being placed here, then anyone could tap on this and access it if they know the screen lock password. So in that case, you may do two things. Either keep a new lock for, for the private space and don't keep the same lock as compared with the screen lock. So the screen lock and the private lock should be kept separately for a much higher degree of privacy. And apart from that, let me show you one more thing. So first off, as you could see, these are the apps which are there in the private space. You may add a new app as well or remove an app from here as well. On top of that, simply go to the settings menu of private space and select hide private space and keep it enabled. Tap on got it. And you could see the private space will now be gone even from the app drawer as well. So let's go back and let me lock it. And as you could see, it's not even being shown here. So if anyone is not aware of this feature they will not be able to access it as well and if you want to access it then simply go to the search menu and search for the private space just a minute so you should search for the private space and it will then be visible so well this was the only way you could access the private space but currently it's not working 
it might be a bug so let's try it once again and i don't know why exactly this feature is currently not working in this linux rom so if you're not able to access it from here as well you may go to the settings menu then go to the security and privacy and from here you may access the private space as well let me show you once again what i was talking about so hide private space let me turn it off and now let me show you if i go to the settings menu hide private space so as you could see it's already say saying if you want you can access the private space in the search bar when by typing it private space but as you could see this feature is currently not working it might the issue will be fixed in the subsequent build but for now if you have hidden the private space you will not be able to access it from the settings menu as well as i have shown you so the only way to access the private space as of now in this build is by going to the settings menu and from there you may go to the security and privacy and then access it from here in the subsequent build this will be rectified it's not a cause of major concern and apart from that all the android 15 our options are there then let's access the wallpaper and style and this is the material ui theming engine whatever is the major color from the wallpaper will be picked up and applied across the entire ui, UI and ux as you might be aware it's the material ui theming engine then you may add the shortcuts at the lock screen in the left and right bottom left and right then you may change a few icons let me enable a few options first dnd aeroplane mode flashlight and you may have a look at the top right of the section this is the Samsung one. Then this is the Kai. Let me enable this. And the change is implemented. Likewise, the Samsung one. Let me apply it. And as you could see, it's now implemented as well. Then you may choose from these font style as well. And hit the apply button. And the font style has been changed as well. If you go to the home screen, you may enable themed icons. And they are activated. Then the color contrast is also a new feature in Android 15. But as of now, you should not interact with it if you are not much sure about this feature the contrast level by default is sufficient enough let's keep it that way you may change the app grid size as well till 6 cross 6 but i usually go with the 5 cross 5 that's the best one for me and then apart from that this is we have already gone through the icon and font so this is the icon shape let's choose the pebble and hit the apply button and the change is now implemented apart from that i I am not able to find the lock screen clock size okay it might be here clock color and size so this is only a single clock style that i can see so there isn't any other clock style as such let me have a look from here so wallpaper and style and it's the same options no other option as such lock screen so only a single clock is there Apart from that, you could also add the widgets from here. And finally is the home screen settings. You may lock the layout in the same section as it is currently and enable notification dot. Then the launcher will need to have access to all the notifications. And apart from that, let's hidden and protected apps. So which I've already seen, you may hide the app from the lock screen, from the app screen and app door as well. And they will be hidden as you could see let's say we have hidden the contacts app and it will no longer be shown here you will then have to unhide it from here as well so let's go here and type in the lock screen pattern and then unhide it from here and themed icons in app door which we have already enabled as well and guys that's just about it so guys on that note we round off this video as you could see the theme icon is not only there in the Home, home screen but it's also enabled in the app drawer this is also a new feature so with that said we round off this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and rounding off let me show you the phone status as well as the poco f5 running the latest android 15 lineage os build so on that note we round off the video if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching